general impressions from week one? Uh, not good enough. Uh, we left too many points on the board, um, struggled in short yards and goal line area. That was the, the things we were frustrated with. I did think uh, personnel-wise, I thought our receivers showed up. I thought we had some opportunities in the pass game to make, and we also had a lot of opportunities we left on the table. You go back and you look at the two red zone throws that we missed down in the uh, end zone. Those are game changers. Uh, we had a chance on the, on the plus side of the field to really put the game away, and we weren't able to connect. So there's a lot of things that were positive coming out of the game, but run game, short yardage goal line, Red zone woes, uh, that stuff that's going to catch up uh, catch up to us against a good football team, which we have coming in this week. When you look at the run game specifically, what do you think was holding that back from, from sort of hitting that also? Yeah, I think there's some, some execution things. Uh, I thought hats off to them. They did a good job, changed their structure a little bit, um, which took us a little time. We made adjustments right after the first drive, and it probably took us a little time to get oiled up. But overall, I think we would go back and say, if we execute a little better, we're going to be able to get Bashaw and Malachi and the guys a little cleaner to the second and third level, which is obviously what we want to be able to do. Is that this morning to come out the gate like that? I know it's such an off-season focus on repping that stuff and really getting down to the nitty-gritty of the ground game. Yeah, yeah and we're, that, nothing's changing. We're still in the nitty-gritty of it. Um, sure, I mean, I think any time we don't run the ball, it's disappointing. It was disappointing at any point last year when we didn't run the football. Um, it's something that you need to be able to do. I think it's a foundational piece that opens up the offense, and we've got to be better, and we will be better. Did Bayshaw show you something despite that? I, I think he had like 10 broken tackles or something yeah. like that. Yeah. He showed exactly what he's shown in practice. I mean, he is as consistent as can be. Um, you expect him to break tackles, and, and that's where the, the frustration probably in lies for me. we got to make sure we're doing a better job of getting him clean to the second level. What about his pass pro? There was one play where two linebackers were coming up the middle of the and took them both out. Yeah, I thought pass protection, guys did a nice job. Uh, you know, there were a lot of three-man rushes, right, which to be expected we would anticipate we're going to be well in pass pro, but there were also a good many five-man pressures. I thought the backs were ID'd correctly. I thought the offensive line did a really nice job of communicating, and that was definitely a strong suit of the night. Would you, how would you rate the offensive line considering three first-time FBS starters up there meshing with Caden and Parker? Yeah, I thought uh, overall I didn't see a lot of wide eyes. I thought they came out with the right mentality. They're just little execution things. I think that group will grow the most from that experience, first time being on the field as starters together. Meadows got quite a few snaps, I think, at right guard. Is that the intent? Is they get him in the game quite a bit? It seems like he could be kind of that swing guy, possibly. There was an intent in that game. He was on a rotation. We wanted to make sure that we got him snaps in the game. Um, he's a guy that's done a nice job. He's very smart, very bright, can play multiple positions, can play inside and outside. So it was good to get him in there and get him some work. You guys did the quarterback rotation on that second drive and then didn't come back to it later in the game. Did you get what you wanted out of that? Did, did that go how you planned? Or we need it... to come back to it more. Uh, it's something that we've that we've talked about. Um, I think the one thing is when you look at it, we, we really used uh, Kyron a little bit situationally. Um, he's certainly much more capable than that. Had the one pass off of RPO, but uh, you know that's something that we have in the plans every week. But I think the flow of the game dictates some things as well. Um, it's not as cookie cutter, I think, as saying that a guy's going to get X amount of snaps, but he is a guy that I think can help our offense win football games. Do you worry about a quarterback's rhythm when they're going in, in and out like that? I think it was three downs, then Grant comes in for the fourth down play. I think that's always a question. This is what we try to do a really good job of is communicating uh, on the front end. I think it's a, it is a rhythm buster if we go into the game and you're pulling a guy here and there and he doesn't know it's coming, right, and the guy's going out and the guy's going back in. But I wouldn't say it's a – uh, you know, I wouldn't say it hinders our rhythm at all, as long as we do a really good job of communicating the possibilities on the front end. Brent was saying there were discussions on the headsets in the second half of getting Kyron back in there. Were you yeah. pushing hard for that, or what are those discussions like when you're Yeah, there was a discussion. I mean, some, I, I've probably got to do a better job there uh, as the coordinator, just kind of sticking with the plan of making sure we get him back in. You get in a, what's, what seems like a relatively tight game late, and you're trying to put a team away, and then time kind of runs away from you. Brent, Brent said that he thought that was that Grant's best game at Virginia Tech in his you know, year and then game. What what was your observations from Grant and what he did, and, and what would you like him see like to see him do better? Uh, you know, he, he would tell you, and I'm going to tell you too. Like we're we're hard in that room. We missed too many opportunities. Um, that that's the. 
that's the bottom line. But I thought the things that you're always looking for, number one, protecting the football. I thought he did a really good job of that. I thought there were some really good situations where he moved in the pocket really well, which obviously helps your protection. I think a lot of times protection gets looked at as just the offensive line and the quarterback, but it takes the entire group to be able to protect well. Time and depth spacing on the back end, quarterback moving in the pocket, getting the ball out on time. I thought from a decision-making standpoint, it was certainly his best game, and, and he would sit here and tell you that there's a lot of throws he'd like to have back, and he's certainly capable of making them. Do you hope that with some of the success you guys have the air, that future opponents maybe have a few fewer hats in the box and <laughs> loosen things up? There's no doubt about it. Uh, this isn't the group this week to expect less hats. Uh, they do a nice job of outnumbering you. Uh, regardless, but certainly when we have an opportunity to stress guys one-on-ones, I think it has a chance to open up other things in the offense. Yeah, when you look at Purdue's defensive front with the three down line then all being, I think, 300 plus pounds plus what they can do off the edge, what type of challenges does that present? Yeah, they're a uh, they're, they're what I would categorize, some people would call it like an odd penny defense in the NFL, uh, two big butch players up on the edge. I think those guys are the, the front is, is certainly one of the strengths of their defense. They run well in the back end. Um, we have some familiarity with a couple of the guys. Um, and it's just a good structure. The structure is really built to outnumber you on every play. And then I think they do a really nice job as a coaching staff of holding shells, holding disguises. So we'll have our work cut out for us. It's certainly a one of the bigger groups uh, we'll play all year, especially when you look in the interior, you're talking about you know, four eyes and three techniques that are 300 plus pounds, a big nose that's a two gapper and they one gap them at times. So um, it, it's a structure that'll present challenges just based on that all five of your offensive linemen have a person over them every play, um, which always makes it a little challenging. Sorry, uh, what stood out to you about Ollie Jennings and how he played and how he can carry them on throughout the season? Yeah, you know what, Ali, I'm sure Coach has said it before, and maybe I have an opportunity, he's just so mature. Uh, the, the moment's not big. He's played a lot of football, and I thought you saw that on, on Saturday night. You know, being in that environment, playing in front of that type of crowd, like he's a guy that rises to the occasion. Um, and I was super impressed with his demeanor, how he led, just really how he did everything that night, and certainly we expect a lot out of Ali uh, moving forward. Benji Gosnell saw his first action coming off that injury. How did you think he kind of stepped up into that role without Gallo? I think he did a good job. I mean, I think you could probably look at a lot of those guys first time. I think there were certainly some things that were, you know, maybe you didn't see him do that at practice in both positive and negative ways. Um, but he'll grow from that a ton. Benji's got a ton of talent. We saw it last camp before he sustained the injury. Uh, he was a guy that we would have looked to get in the rotation last year. He's, he's a guy that has a chance to be a three-tool player at tight end. So I was proud of Benji. And then Benji would certainly, just like Grant, stand up here and tell you there's a ton of things that, that I want to improve on. And, and he certainly will moving forward. We've heard a lot that, about XTB. Is there yeah. a chance we see him this Saturday or moving in to the fold? Oh, we'll see. We don't want to give away all our secrets. You know that tight end room pretty well from last yes, year. Yes, sir. What do you lose when you lose a veteran like Gallo? Just in terms of experience? Just game experience. I mean, tight end is a position where you're thrown into so many different scenarios in the course of a game. You know, I, I would I would probably liken it to quarterback in some ways as far as he's not throwing a ball, but the decisions he has to make, being able to play everywhere from field one to boundary one, in the core, out of the core, full back, in line, all those things. There's so many decisions that you get through game experience. So I'd say that's the biggest thing you lose. And we can't wait to get Nick back in the fold because he's such a good leader for not only that room, but just for our offense. You've got three guys in, in Daquan, Harrison, and Benji that all, they're all young, but they seem talented and ready to go. What are your expectations for them? And, and how, how do you feel like you guys might have to potentially rotate them and stuff? I know Pry said that you guys might travel the fourth guy just for right. extra depth there. Well, I think you always want to travel for it, that position at a minimum, uh, depending on what you're doing personnel-wise offensively. That can fluctuate week to week. Um, but, yeah, we're going to rotate them. I think it's a position you want to rotate, very similar to a receiver. Uh, you shouldn't have a guy playing 60, 70 snaps. You know, if you look back last year in the room, Gallo probably had too many at times. You want the guy to be able to be fresh. He's He's a guy that when you look back at the end of the game, like volume-wise, the tight end position is really up there on your offense just because of what they're also asked to do from a power standpoint uh, on a consistent basis in the box. But, yeah, I would expect to see you know all three of those guys at all times, different personnel packages, uh, different uh, tag plays. you got a little, little rain going there. <laughs> um, different tag plays, things like that. And uh, those, guys, those guys will continue to get better for sure.
Has Cole Pickett done anything to jump out at you at that fourth tight end position? Cole's done a good job. He's consistent, uh, shows up every day. I think Cole's got a ton of strengths, and, and uh, he's done a really nice job at practice, so he'll keep trending.